Hey everyone, it's Ivan, Kipatcher.com, out here for another year view, and today we're talking lasers. This little guy right here, which is the CTF2 by Phantom Hill. So, broad strokes, what does it do? Well, it is a pretty neat design for a infrared aiming laser, as well as the ability to use illumination, whether it is infrared illumination or in the visible spectrum. So, I'll go over some of kind of the features and how this actually works. The unit body is made out of aluminum, machined aluminum, and on the bottom here, we can see how it actually mounts. So it basically goes on to a section of rail, and this is a locking piece here. You tighten it with that screw right there, that Torx head, and then forward and recessed right there, as well as right up top, recessed right there. Those are where you actually screw to adjust the aiming laser, and aiming laser is behind that lens right there directly center over the bore which more on that later and then on the bottom it tells you battery size cr123 back here you can unscrew these to get access to your battery sealed with an o-ring and then on top we have our buttons we have a button in the middle which you can press for momentary laser or you can double press for constant on and then we have a button on the right and a button on the left. Respectively, this will activate the laser as well as whatever illumination device you have over here. And this will do the same over there. They do not have a constant on function. They're just momentary. And these are threaded for basically any of your standard like Surefire heads, which is pretty much industry standard. And so, yeah, that's kind of the operation. So I'll tell you how it works in application. This is made to mount onto 12 o'clock position on your rail. Technically, you could put it anywhere on any piece of pick rail, but 12 o'clock makes the most sense for a number of reasons and makes it ambidextrous, regardless of whether you're reaching up with your left or your right, still really easy to access those buttons. So it's pretty cool. I guess I'll go over things I like about it. Twofold. One, you have a aiming laser that is directly center line over the bore. This alleviates all kinds of things with respect to shooting. So when you zero it, basically you have a converging zero wherever you want it to be, whatever distance makes sense for your application. And as you push out and go further, you're simply just holding a little higher. Or if you're up close and you have mechanical offset, your mechanical offsets like that and it's also directly over the bore so your laser's not here and your round impacting here your laser's there and your round impacts there so you roughly have the same mechanical offset you deal with just like you would with like a day optic shooting up close the other thing is the laser well I just talked about the laser the fact that it is just the laser rather so when it comes to illumination there's a lot of people that do a really good job with illumination. When it comes to illumination on board to laser units, there are very few people doing a good job with that. One of the people that I think honestly does the best, B.E. Myers. But do you have like 3000 plus for a mall? You might not. But if you want good illumination like you get with the mall, you can get a Kiji. And this allows you to take a Kiji head, whether it is the three degree or the 10 degree, and you can go ahead and you would take it off of your Kiji body it comes on, and you just thread this thing straight on there. And now, rather than some sort of laser with honestly a really crappy illuminator, whether it's a D ball, hollow sun, whatever, sorry, not sorry, you can actually get a really good illuminator to just pair with a decent laser. And then same goes on the white light side, obviously visible spectrum, put whatever head you want on here and you have your white light. And so going back to functionality, how you work it, that middle one, laser only, one over here would activate my Kiji, which we can't see right now, but have some footage of that. And then the one over on the right side, because it's just the way I have it set up, you could swap heads, do whatever you want have two white light, have two infrared, whatever you want to do. 
but this white or the right one activates the right head, in this case, visible light. And really intuitive, pretty easy to use. Having said that, how have I used it? How's it done for me? Well, I've used it on a number of host guns, done a bunch of shooting with it, and it has and continues to do a pretty good job. There, the aforementioned, where the laser's positioned, as well as the fact that the aftermarket has good solutions for visible as well as infrared lighting, this basically capitalizes on that. So rather than having to pay a bunch of money for something with a onboard IR illuminator that's maybe lacking, and then having to get some sort of white light solution, this puts everything in one and gives you the best of both worlds, or the best of all the worlds, with respect to pairing it with whatever infrared or visible light source you want, which I think is really cool. In my use, is there anything I've came across that I don't really care for? Well, I guess we'll start with, can you buy these? I'm sorry, you cannot. Price-wise, I wanna say they were around $700, just the unit, and then you put whatever heads you want on there, and through Phantom Hill, you could also get it with a Kiji head, as well as a high output white light head. The whole package, I think, was like 1400 bucks maybe, which if you compare that to other options, it's actually a really good deal for white light, IR illuminator, and IR laser, and all one package. It's actually really pretty affordable. Regrettably, I talk to them over at Phantom Hill, no longer making them. I think they just ran into like a production thing, like not produced, machined by Phantom Hill. Guy does design and he still does design, I think within the industry, he just no longer makes these or has these made rather for him because of trying to find machine time, things like that, regrettably. So I say that, unfortunately, I've had this for a while, used it a bunch, you can't currently buy it. But I'm telling you things that I don't care for about it, or probably more aptly put, could be improved, because at some point, someone will either buy the design, or he'll be in a place where hopefully he can manufacture them again, at which point he can make this better. While I haven't had this thing shift on me, it has the potential to, in that, the only thing locking it within, in between the 1913 slots is basically this round cross bolt. It seems to have held. It could probably actually just use like a recoil lug in there that it actually rests against, which is squared off and just has more surface area rather than that rounded cross bolt. I would think. Other things that could be improved is honestly the switching. Well, I mentioned it's really intuitive, it's really easy. Also, none of these switches are fenced, and personally, I find them to be a little small if I'm using gloves. And when I say fenced, basically, think about the way, if you actually have a good AR lower, the mag release is fenced. So you can't, something can't just smash against the side of your receiver and drop your magazine. There's fencing around it. So if these in turn were basically fenced so that you can't accidentally depress them, albeit it's kind of hard to accidentally depress them because unfortunately the buttons are pretty small. But ideally the button's larger and fenced. I think that would be awesome. As I mentioned, there's a lot of good stuff going with this unit. Those are just, not that it's not usable. It's just those are things that I think could definitely improve it. As mentioned, unfortunately, you cannot currently purchase these right now. Why do I even bother creating a video on it? Because they are out there. You can actually find them on the secondary market. And if nothing else, I think they're really cool. And if Phantom Hill doesn't sell the design or start making them again, hopefully at some point someone will make something similar. In that, you're able to create a unit that's pretty affordable and honestly has kind of the best of what the market has available. Meaning the best illuminators that you can get, whether white light or infrared, and all in one package. 
which is something that's not kind of out there or not very well fleshed out anyway as far as having one unit that's going to give you white light ir laser as well as ir illumination now granted if this also had a viz laser would pretty much check all the boxes which would be great one other thing worth mentioning is form factor does it matter it can in that this is kind of wider than your gun would otherwise be if you had everything over to one side meaning if you're running a mall which is throwing itself right or left hand shooter off to one side or the other and then you just run like a white light underneath that it's probably a little bit narrower than the width of this where does that really matter honestly usually shooting through barricades or something like that where you put the gun up you're like bam but fortunately the laser is still center line over the bore so if your illuminator is not throwing or some of it's blocked your laser is still going through there so something to be aware of but like i said not currently as filming this being produced but can still be found on the secondary market and overall pretty cool design but as always thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com look forward to seeing you next time